All right, yeah, let's start with some cricket. The massive women's Caribbean Premier League returns today for its third edition with a repeat of last year's final featuring the defending champions, Barbados Royals, taking on the Guyana Amazon Warriors at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy in Taruba, Trinidad and Tobago. Match time, 6 p.m. in Jamaica, 7 Eastern Caribbean time. And guess what? Yeah, you guessed it. All matches will be live on Sportsmax platforms. The competition would again feature some of the region's top T20 talent plus 12 international stars spread across the three participating teams. Let's have a look at the squads and we'll start with the Barbados Royals to be captained by Hayley Matthews who is also the West Indies captain. Laura Harris, the 33-year-old top order batter from Australia, Rashad Williams and Chanel Henry, the Jamaicans. Georgia Redmayne is a wicketkeeper batter from Australia, the second of three Australians in this lineup. Shamaria at the part of the Sri Lankan, what a class act she is. 12 international centuries across ODI and the T20 internationals. Sherian Fraser, uh, Janaba Joseph, uh, Naijani Cumberbatch is just 16 years old, the Barbadian. She gets into this royal setup. Uh, Trisha and Holder, Alia Elaine. Uh, there is uh, also Shabika Gajnabi. Amanda Jade Wellington, she is the youngest of the three Australians, just 27 years old. Afi Fletcher, the fine leg spinner, and uh, Kiana Joseph completing the Barbados Royals lineup. It looks like a pretty good squad, that one. So too, the Guyana Amazon Warriors, beaten finalists from last year. They are captained by Stefani Taylor. Some would say the finest batter to come out of the Caribbean on the women's side. Shemaine Campbell in the lineup as well. Lauren Winfield Hill, a 33-year-old wicketkeeper batter coming out of England. Natasha McLean, always dangerous at the top of the order. Erin Burns, she is the oldest in the this setup. She is 36 years old, coming out of England as well. Ashmini Munisar, Chloe Tryon, well, she's a powerhouse out of South Africa. And there is also the 19 year old Raeliana Grimmond. Shanetta Grimmond is in the lineup as well. Nia Latchman, Kaisia Schultz, the left arm spinner, Kate Wilmot, the 19 year old medium pacer coming out of Jamaica. There is Shabnim Ishmael, Karishma Ramarat, the fine off spinner for the West Indies. She'll be looking to do great as well for the Amazon Warriors and another veteran in this setup, Shakira Silman. And to close out the squads, the Trinidad Trinbago Knight Riders, their captain by Deandra Dutton, of course, um, will return to international cricket shortly after coming out of retirement, but she'll be looking to deliver quality performances in the WCPL. Kaisia Knight is there. How about Meg Lanning? Any team that has Meg Lanning is a very good team because she's an absolute star. 17 international centuries. 15 in T20, make that 15 in ODIs too in T20 internationals. Jamima Rodriguez out of India, quality middle order batter. Kaishona Knight, Shadeen Nation, um, Chanel Shaw is there. Samara Ramnath, another youngster, just 16 years old from Trinidad and Tobago. We'll see how she goes. Shika Pandya, 35 year old all rounder out of uh, India. Jazara Claxton from St. Kitts and Nevis, not just a fine cricketer, but also a very, very good athlete as well. That's in track and field, uh, Janelia Glasgow. And Nisa Mohammed, well, she's retired from the international game, 35 years old now, but obviously still has a lot to offer at the regional level. Uh, Shamelia Connell and Jess Johansson, the Australian all-rounder, who will be very dangerous with her left arm spin. So yes, three very good looking squads there for the women's CPL. Joining us to look ahead to the competition is a Trinbega Knight Riders bowler, Anissa Mohammed. Yes, such a pleasure to have her. Anissa, welcome to the Sportsman Zone. How are you doing? Um, just what, less than two hours away now from the start of the third edition of the WCPL. Yes, thank you very much for having me. I'm very excited to 
kick things off um amazon taking on the royals tonight so that'll be a good game because we have to face both teams so i would be glued to my tv looking at that game as well i was just going to ask you if you're going to be going to the venue or you'll be watching on sports max but you've given us that answer what's max it is <laughs> <laughs> which is right um talk to me about what the expectations are this season though specifically for you but also for the Trinbago Knight Riders, you missed out on the final last season. I'm pretty sure you'll want to put that right this time around. Yeah, definitely. Um, we didn't have the year we wanted last year. Um, looking at our squad this year, I think we have a very, very good team. And we're looking to go one step further and win this, this year's uh, WCPL and celebrate Knight Riders 10th anniversary. <laughs> that sounds good. Sounds as if you've all given this some thought. I want to get an understanding, though, of the fact that you've retired now from international cricket. How you see your role in this setup in the WCPL, um, especially when it comes on to the younger regional players that are in the setup, and there are quite a few of them. Yeah, I think my role remains the same as if I was a player. Um, for me, it's more about motivating the younger players, trying to give advice wherever I can, because at the end of the day, we want them to excel, we want them to do better. You know, a lot of players have said they want to be like me, and I continuously say to them, I want you to be better than me. So I think that would be my role in this tournament, to try and help them as much as possible to realize their full potential, and hopefully they'll be able to go out on the international stage and represent well. Yeah, and Anissa, something I'm very excited about and I think will draw the crowd because I'm one who believes that, you know, our fans, when it comes to the women's cricket, can do a lot better. So now there's the excitement of the double header with the West Indies men who will be playing the T20 matches against South Africa. I'd say it's a big step in the direction that I want to see women's cricket heading and the turnout when it comes to spectators. How excited are you? Yeah, definitely. I, I really hope that the fans would come out and actually stay back for the women's game. Yeah. You know, a lot of people say the women's game is not as exciting as the men. But I beg to differ. I think we, we bring the same excitement. We hit the same sixes, big sixes. A lot of our <laughs> girls, as we say, they hit big man sixes, you know. Yeah. Um, even if you look at our fielding, our, our bowling, you can see that we are just as good as the men and we are entertaining as the men. So I really hope that a lot of people stay back and look at our game. Yeah, and you know, I had the opportunity to watch the Women's 100 I'm, live. I can't hear you too clear, sorry. An Anissa, are you hearing me? Hearing you very low. Oh, okay, so I'm going to try to project to ensure that you hear me. Is it any better? A little bit. Yeah, so I had the opportunity to watch the Women's 100 at Lourdes, um, the one, the final that just ended. And Anissa, I was so impressed about the turnout because you could hardly get a seat. And I think, you know, if you can, of course, talk to the viewers and talk to the fans, maybe that will help in getting them to come out of their houses and support the women's cricket. Well, I have been walking around the camp telling all the international <laughs> players that Trinidad is the best place to watch cricket in the Caribbean. So I really hope our fans come out and not let me down and really cheer on for us and not let me down. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too, for your sake, of course. Um, let's talk about the balance of the competition now, because I know you're going to tell me how good your Trinbago Knight Riders team is. And I won't be able to argue with you because you are in the team. They've already won this competition before. So basically, it's just Guyana Amazon Warriors that um, are yet to, to settle the scores and walk away with that title. Talk to me about the balance of the three teams and, you know, just the ones to watch out for. Yeah, um, well, obviously, TKR have the best team in the tournament and we will go forward and win this tournament. <laughs> Next. <laughs> But no, seriously, though, I think all the teams are balanced in terms of experience, um, They, uh, in terms of all wrong players, uh, younger players. TKR, of course, we have Deandra Dutton, we have uh, the Knight Sisters, we also have uh, Jess Jonathan, we have quite a number of our uh, international players. We have Rodriguez, we have Pande, so we do have, we have Anissa Mohammed, so we do have a lot of experience and we're hoping to move forward and have a good tournament. Uh, you look at Barbados Royals, Hayley Matthew, of course, Chanel Henry, Aliyah Allen. They also have quite a number of good uh, international players. Atapatu, Jade Wellington, as you know, last year she had an excellent tournament. 
Um, Laura Harris, she can take the game away from you. And moving on to Guyana, obviously, Stephanie Taylor, very good with the bat as well. Yeah. Um, Shemaine Campbell, Natasha McLean, Erin Burns had an excellent tournament last year as well. <laughs> Chloe Tran, we know she's a very dangerous player. She can take the game away from you. With the ball, they have Ishmael, uh, Ram Harak, they have Selman. So they do have quite a number of good players in their team as well. But cricket is played on the day, and we are hoping that on every day TKR play, we come out on top. <laughs> <laughs> and you say you, you, touch, you touched on it earlier on, and I want to ask more specifically, what will the TKR team do this year to ensure that you come out on top? Because you referenced, you know, not having things go your way last year. Um, what specifically could you um, attach the team's uh, failure to win last year uh, as the reason and uh, what would be different about this year's bid? I think what we did not do well last year was bat well. I think our batting department, we fell down. And hopefully with a lot of experience coming in this year, we, we'll be able to actually bat through the 20 overs and put a good score on the ball. Score on the ball, sorry. Um, looking at our bowling and our feeling, I think we, we're pretty good in that department. So again, it's batting for us and we do have a lot of international players who will bring that for us. Yeah, and what does Deandra Dottin's return mean to this unit? Oh, Deandra is very inspirational, you know, just having Deandra on the team and knowing what she can what she can bring to any team at all. Um, that's uh, a plus for any team. It's a motivation, you know, just having her there knowing that she can take the game away from anybody. It's a, a big plus for us and we're really excited to have her back. Can you talk to us quickly about her match sharpness because she would have played less cricket than pretty much all of the other players involved in the tournament. We know she's a quality player, but um, have you seen anything from her in the nets and in, in training that would suggest that um, she'll just be picking up from where she left off? Well, we hope she'll pick up from where she left off. Um, she recently came from a camp in Antigua where she spent two weeks there training. And I saw her in the nets here and she looked like she was still training. So let's hope that that works for us this year. Yeah, and of the other rivals that you have, you've, you've already gone through the teams and the rosters and how strong you think they are, but um, would you suggest that either of the two teams, Royals or Ghana, Amazon Warriors, would be your stiffest challengers? I'll, I'll probably go towards Royals. Again, I think they have a very strong batting lineup and bowling lineup as well. Um, I, we know that they won last year, so they will be you know, confident coming into this tournament. And I think that probably Royals will be our toughest opponent, opponent this year. Yeah, Anissa, I saw a report earlier today that the ICC had rated a few of the pitches during the World Cup as unsatisfactory. One of them, um, the pitch in Taruba for the semifinal um, between Afghanistan and South Africa. Um, have you had an opportunity to see what the um, pitch is like for the WCPL? Um, and can you give us any insight? Unfortunately, no. I, we, we trained at UE, so I, I have not had a chance to look at that pitch. Mm, all right. Tough one going in. Well, Anissa, thank you very much. Enjoy the opening match tonight. We will be enjoying it like you watching it on your home of champions, Sportsmax. <laughs> and all the very best for the duration of the tournament. Thank you very much. Yeah, Anissa Mohammed there. Yeah, real legend as far as West Indies women's cricket is concerned. Outstanding bowler, outstanding bowler. And uh, although the West Indies have, um, in recent years, gotten in a few top quality spinners, Anissa Mohammed is Anissa Mohammed. Yeah, we'll take a break. I'll be back with more on the Sportsmax Zone.